Hey everybody, welcome to another Professionally Incorrect. I'm Liam Clisham, and today we're gonna to take a look at how to orient normals, or really how to deal with orientations on a point level. I became, for lack of a better way to explain it, kind of obsessed with this in the last couple of weeks. Um, just why do we have a nice orient along curve vanilla way of manipulating roll and yaw and pitch and all of this, but we don't have it for points. Um, so I, I wanted to do a just a nice simple setup of putting cubes onto a centroid here and rotate them around. Very standard MoGraphy setup. And I'm sure lots of you are yelling at the screen. The screen. Liam, there's mops, just use mops. Yes, I agree, <laughs> just use mops. But my obsession with this came from what if you work at a place that doesn't allow you to install third-party plugins for whatever reason. Obviously mops is super safe, but maybe they've got like some weird pipeline thing where you can't install a third-party utility like mops. There must be a vanilla way to do this. So like I said, uh, I started going back to this orient along curves, trying to bring this in over here and messing around with all of these and just not getting anywhere to finally think of, okay, well then I guess I could just, you know, control all my orientations over here. So if we're looking at the normals and then maybe blast them away like so, and then do like an attribute copy over to these points over here. And it, it just started to be many nodes adding up to get to a solution, which I, I didn't want to have to do lots and lots of nodes, even though with this solution, you'll see. I ended up having to do three nodes. Um, but yeah, just, just to get to some of these controls, it didn't seem like it made sense. So kept going back to this orient along curve. And if you pop open your geometry spreadsheet, whether you've docked it down here like I have or up here uh, in the normal spot that they usually dock it, you'll see that by default, and let me turn this on, up is usually on as well, but it's usually up and normal turned on here, but not orient or any of these transform options. And if we play with this, it's actually manipulating the normal value. Yeah, you can see the up value is changing too, but that's not important here for, for the moment. Um, just everything is manipulating the roll, yaw, and pitch on the normals. So I started to think, okay, how can we go about doing something similar? I know we've got these new attribute adjust vectors, which we can manipulate the normals in here. And diving in deep, I came across that inside the adjustments for menu, we have a directions and length, direction only, and then length only. And if we select this adjustment for direction only, we get a couple operations that we don't get elsewhere for rotate, spread, and interpolate. And rotate sounds exactly what you, like you'd expect. It is a rotate angle. So playing around with this, this is exactly what we get for orient along curves, but we can now manipulate it on the axis of our choosing and along here with the angle, and then also blend it however we want. So we, we can start using fall offs and masks just like you can with mops. So basically everything I was looking for in a vanilla mops tool right here in, in this one node. The only real gotcha is you can't isolate the axis of rotation the way that you would expect. So I have decided to break it out into three different attribute adjusts. And after experimenting, found out that the first input matches the pitch here. The second matches the yaw. So if we put it one on the Y and then uh, one on Z will match the roll. This is contingent on you setting up a normal on the Z axis here. Otherwise, it's gonna change the order of operations for these. So just keep that in mind if you end up having your normal on 
Y or X, the pitch, yaw, and roll are going to adjust based on what you set for your initial normal here. Um, one other point that I want to touch on is you'll see that I have this up vector here created. Don't actually need it in my experimentation, um, just like I had it turned off here. Really don't need it. So what does that mean? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at this setup that I was talking about. If I come down here with the viewport catch up, close this down, and I'm going to go ahead and switch back to this here. You can now come up and didn't mean to do that. There we go. Start controlling your pitch like so. So say maybe we want just like 40-ish degrees there, and then your yaw like so, and then your roll like so, whatever you want to set it to. And then you can change your or turn on your enable post process and change your blend from blend by constant to blend by attribute. And now we've got this mask from target up here controlling our rotation for all those three pitch yaw and rolls. Um, so that's basically the gist of the tutorial in, in the most basic form. Now, I do recommend that people start to experiment with building their own tool. Um, maybe we'll get something from side effects in Houdini 20 when that comes out. There's rumors that it's going to be a very large and jam-packed release. Um, so maybe they're going to do this orient along curve, but make it accessible for points. Um, but what I've essentially done is taken these three, thrown them into a subnet here, like so, and then I'm just doing relative reference for all of these things. Um, I'm not going to walk through that in this tutorial, just not really worth the time. But as I move into the next section of the tutorial, I'm just going to use this to set up the scene because it's a little bit easier. And if I go back like this, you can see we've got all the same controls in here, just kind of packed into one object instead of broken out into these three. I do want to add a lot more control to this. There are some really cool things that you can do um, beyond just setting your own rotation with these. So if I switch back to this first input here, and for I'm going to go ahead and just zero these out, except for pitch at the moment. So we're just working on that. But if you change this from constant to random, you can now get random values for all of these and set what you want them to be between. So, you know, negative 35, or we can do negative 180 to 180. And then as our tool goes across, it'll reset these back to their original position. You can also use noise if you want. Again, setting your min and max rotation values, and then playing with all these here. And again, using your post process down here if you want to do that. Um, so a lot of stuff that could be built into your own tool here, basically just taking this and then adding a pitch, yaw, and roll value uh, for, I guess, adjustment value is what I want to do over here. Just kind of make my own attribute adjust specifically for these. Um, so yeah, that that is the gist of it. And just to go over what's going on up here, if you haven't watched any of my other videos, I'm just throwing down an extract centroid running on the primitives instead of pieces. And we get these points here in the center instead of off to the side here, which this merge is doing down here. I was just comparing the two of, all right, if I set these here, do I get the same values across my centroid points, which I do. Um, so yeah, nothing really fancy here, just kind of extracting the centroid, setting normal, and then doing all these operations I was talking about. So let's apply this in maybe like a more advanced or like packed method. Um, so if you've watched any of my earlier videos, I was messing around with like a disintegration style effect with a head. And I decided to revisit that, but um, using this orient tool here. So what I've done is I've got our little test head geometry, uh, getting rid of the mouth bag, don't need that. Just doing a match size, put it on the ones, or on the ones, oh my gosh, <laughs> on the baseline there. Why in the world did I say on the ones? Uh, 
yeah, so I'm just getting it on the baseline here. Scaling up to be uh, one by one by one is where I was go going with that. And then this Voronoi Fracher, nothing really fancy here. Just a few lines kind of cutting this thing up. And then if we throw down the assemble here, I'm just packing that and running this centroid over the primitives there. Um, and then throwing it down into a primitive here. I'll put a link up in the little cool bloop bloop thing that drops down in the corner to my old disintegration video so you can see how I did this. But I'm just going to throw down and explode points here so you can see how this is broken up kind of into this cool little, I don't know, ghost in a shell type assembly thing. Um, yeah, just kind of like a shell building back on into a sort of, I don't know, yeah, I guess ghost in the shell or maybe like Iron Man style build on for his robots. Anywho, so yeah, there's that centroid again, put normals on it and then have that same mask here going across these points, our little orient tool that I built and then also offsetting the position of these points like so, which is also controlled by the mask. So we get this fall off of these things coming back in and then running on the primitives. And so in the old video, you'll see, you just come in, mark do as transform, turn on this rotate template. And I've changed this down here to run across all attributes to transform. And like so, we get this moving back. And if we wanna have a little bit more fun, we can throw down another, um, I guess, P scale adjustment. So float adjust like so, which I believe sets the P scale automatically, yep come in here and I guess we'll blend by our attribute mask up here like so I'll set this to one so when it comes back it's actually scaling down um, if we set it to do, 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 do I think it's float attribute and mask this will let us remap it or remapped attribute. There we go. That's the one we want. Um, so if you do it from remapped attribute, then you can swap these around here to go from zero from one to zero. So it's smaller, and then as they come in, they scale up like so. At least that should be working. Am I doing that backwards? What am I doing wrong here? Zero to one, like so. You can see I'm scaling up range zero to one. Do I need to flip this too? Maybe I need to flip this too. Well, this is absurd. Hmm. It's because I have the blend on as well. Uh, that's what it is. It's because I have the blend on. That's like double blending. So this should be one to zero like we had it before. Okay, that's my bad. So if you want to do this by doing a remapped attribute, don't use the blend up here, use the remapped value down here. And instead of this going from zero to one, it's going from one to zero. So we get this cool little build on effect here. And of course you can remap it however you want. So let's say we'll do like, it's kind of rounded in here. So this gets like so. And I wonder, well, let me shoot above this value. So we get kind of like a little bounce in there. No, it won't let me, that's okay. Um, but yeah, you can control this fall off in here where that scaling happens. So maybe you want it to really taper in for a while or even be almost fully built by the time it gets into its spot, like so. A lot of fun you can have messing around with this. So anyway, quick breakdown of what we did before going back into our basic setup here is just setting up a grid, getting your points. Don't have to do a centroid if you want. This will work anywhere that there's normals and points and doing manipulation, but setting my normal here to Z like so. You can see that pointing that way. Got a little mask set up here. If we do this, you can see the points go from red back to white. And we're controlling all of our pitch, yaw, and rotations with this attribute adjust vector on our normals here. And you can set that however you want. 
down below here. So if we start messing with these and this like so, and that's got a random noise on it, you'll see the difference between the attribute orient and what we are doing there, which actually, as I'm looking at this, is this not, oh, it's because I was too far on the timeline. <laughs> this mask was driving that. So there we go, now they're showing up. Um, and yeah, just have this all post-processed with a blend attribute, like so. Again, like I said in the beginning, Mops has this down to a T, nice and packed up into your own little tool here. Um, so this is great if you need to use vanilla Houdini for whatever reason and you're on a job and you can't install third-party stuff. Thanks everybody for watching. If you have any questions, comments, etc., go ahead and leave them below and do all that cool YouTube stuff of like, subscribe, ring that bell, and whatever. Um, but yeah, I appreciate all the support and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.